Bright light therapy for depression. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and this channel is about mental health education and self-improvement. If you don't want to miss an episode, click subscribe and the notification bell. One of my early videos on YouTube was about how to use light therapy, and it was from 2012. And in it, I focus on using light therapy to help your sleep and your mood. But I warned you about the potential for triggering a manic episode in people with bipolar disorder. Well, that was seven years ago. And at the time, light, using light therapy for bipolar disorder was kind of sketchy and it was something that we only advised with caution. But things have changed since then and evolved with the research. And now we've had enough studies that show an improvement in depression symptoms when you're in the depressed phase of bipolar disorder. I've referenced several studies in the description um, for you to take a look at if you want to see the evidence, but for this video, I'm going to focus on how to use light therapy. And by the way, if you have unipolar depression, meaning you have episodes of depression but no mania, don't feel left out, I do have a video for you on wake therapy for depression. It combines bright light therapy and sleep deprivation, and I'll link it in the corner and in the description. Here's how the therapy works. It's a little different from the way we use traditional light therapy for depression. With that, you use it first thing in the morning within 30 minutes to an hour of waking up. If you're a late riser, you're supposed to make sure you use the light before 8 a.m. With bipolar depression, you use the light in the middle of the day between noon and 2 p.m. You start with 15 minutes and increase by 15 minutes every week and for a maximum of 60 minutes. This is different from the light therapy with depression where you start with 30 minutes, but going slower reduces the risk of destabilizing your mood. But because you're going slower, the improvement may also be slower. Another update from my original recommendations is that um, to really be effective, you need a large light. They make smaller lights like this one that fit neatly and conveniently in the palm of your hand and feel a little less like you're doing treatment because of that. But to really get the best effect, um, it's recommended that you have a light that's 12 to 17 inches um, in size, giving off 10,000 lux of bright white light. Some studies use between five and 10,000, but I think the general consensus is that 10,000 really is best. The light box selected should emit a full spectrum of white light with the UV filter. So you don't need to use the blue light that's been or typically more helpful for shifting your sleep. I'll have a separate video where I review some light boxes. It's best to sit with the light above you and sit about a foot away, but really no further than that. And you wanna have it at about a 45 degree angle from your face, preferably above your head. You don't want to stare directly at it, but you can do other things like read, eat, check your Instagram feed, but you just want to make sure that the light hits your eyes indirectly. You don't want to have your head down where the light doesn't even hit your eyes. How long should you use the bright light therapy? If you respond to the bright light therapy, it's reasonable to continue doing it for the next 12 months after your depression resolves. And this will be similar to continuing antidepressant therapy for a year. In the maintenance phase, you may be able to get by though with using it three times a week. But if you notice your depression, depression symptoms starting to return, then go back to using it daily. Another point to this, you do stay on your regular medication for bipolar disorder. In fact, if you've stopped um, your mood stabilizers for whatever reason, you're definitely at risk of switching into hypomania or mania if you use the light therapy as your only treatment. This therapy is designed to be used during the depressed phase of bipolar disorder instead of using an antidepressant. But if your doctor has you on an antidepressant along with your mood stabilizer and you're still depressed, you can decide to use this therapy, but keep an eye out for the hypomania. And of course, if you improve after only 15 minutes of the light, then no need to increase uh, the timing of it. Just you can stay at the 15 minutes. So what are some adverse effects of bright light therapy? Bright light therapy is pretty well tolerated without a lot of side effects, but the most common side effects include things like headaches, eye strain, nausea, and agitation. 
And the adverse effects are not permanent and tend to resolve either from decreasing the time that you use the light or just stopping it altogether. With bright light therapy, um, more is not always better. So you wanna keep the light exposure only to what you need and not go beyond a maximum of 60 minutes. If you feel better on it, don't try to do it more, do more of it late in the afternoon or the evening. The evening light exposure can actually interfere with your falling asleep. So that's the nuts and the bolts of bright light therapy. Why wouldn't everyone do this? Well, you do have to purchase the device, and but it is a one-time cost, and some of the devices are under $100. But I think the real barrier to this is just the time and the commitment necessary to do this. Um, I mean, we are talking about 15 minutes up to an hour that you've got to take out in the middle of the day and set aside that time. If you're working, you've got to have the time to do that, plus have the privacy to be able to do that, because after all, if you're using a device like this, you're gonna need some privacy. So it's got its pluses and minuses to it. But if you're someone for whom you've not done well during the depressed phase of your disorder um, and none of the medication adjustments seem to help you, this is a real consideration that maybe you could talk with your doctor about and bring up and see what he or she thinks about that for you. Um, I know in my own experience, the depression is the harder phase to treat. I think that's pretty much the general consensus with people. It's much easier uh, in someone who's in a throes of a manic episode to dampen them down with, uh, or dampen down the fire with medication. Um, but to pull someone up out of depression is a much harder feat. So this could be something that could be um, a good solution for you during those, those episodes. All right, well, Thanks for watching. Share this video with someone that you think uh, it may help and let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great one. See you next time.